So, a few weeks ago, I talked about a uh, creepy pasta on this series, and I enjoyed the experience so much, I thought I would do it again. This time, we're going to be talking about a creepy pasta titled Funland, written by Darren Silvers. Cool. This is a creepypasta that I first came across, uh, I think, uh, maybe shortly after Mr. Creepypasta did a narration of it. But I thought, you know, that was a pretty good one. That was just kind of like a fun... It didn't really creep me out too much, uh, but I just thought it was like a good horror story. It was simple, to the point, um, uh, just, just some fun, creepy stuff. So what's it about? Let, let's get into that. Let's, let's talk about the story. Basically starts off with our, um, our, uh, storyteller narrator. I don't think the main character is given a name, so we'll just refer to him as the storyteller. But he's talking about, uh, memories of his hometown, just things that used to be there that are now closed down. And, uh, one of the things was an amusement park called Funland. And I guess this was just sort of like a kind of old-fashioned kind of amusement park, you know, not like a big, giant, overblown thing. Just kind of like simple little doll houses that kids can play in. Um, what is it, like a batting cage where you do the baseball thing. I don't know sports much, but yeah, one of those. And a mini golf course. One of the things that the author made a point to highlight about the mini golf course was on the final hole. If you get a hole in one, there's basically this outhouse. There'd be like an animatronic character within there. So you get a hole in one character opens the door and it's like really like a anthropomorphic dog is uh, the character and he just starts like shouting something like hey what are you doing here get out or whatever it is just kind of like some uh, immature kid humor so he talks about just you know how hilarious that was and the fond memories of this place skip ahead a bit fun land closes down talks about how like you know he would just drive past it every now and then and gradually just see it decaying more and more. And one day he gets this great idea, him and some friends, they're gonna just sneak into the abandoned park and check things out just to kind of see what it's like. Basically some urban exploring kind of stuff. <coughs> oh, that was, that was almost an issue. So they're checking out the ruins of everything, uh, talking about all these animal statues, things have fallen over, and just painting a good picture of an abandoned amusement park and uh, you know I do have a fascination with abandoned amusement parks in real life I think it's just kind of like a neat thing just abandoned places like that in general it's just kind of neat it's like spooky but comforting all at the same time because of like a weird nostalgia vibe of I don't know whatever um, but he eventually does find the dog in the, uh, the mini golf course so they go in there and there's like a lot of build up like opening up the outhouse to see like you know, is it still going to be there and I believe I'm pretty sure that they actually brought a, a golf ball and you know they got a hole in one just for all time's sakes and it actually uh the, the, the outhouse still functioned like it actually caused the thing to open up after all these years you know much to everybody's surprise like what that's not supposed to happen but it gets weirder hold on so it opens up and then the dog does the whole routine of you saying hey get out of here but they just get a good look at how like decayed the thing has become over all these years. Talk about the teeth being exposed and just, you know, all the spooky kind of like very, uh, I guess like Five Nights at Freddy's-ish. Uh, I've only really like played the first of those games, but I guess as we get on, we get like more like decayed animatronic stuff, which is just a very spooky vibe. Right now we're in like creepy territory. Like, oh, this thing kind of looks creepy, but then it starts like, you know, like doing weird stuff that it, totally should not be doing. Like it ends up standing up and grabbing our, uh, our main uh, character here. Things that uh, it's made very explicitly clear, this animatronic was not that sophisticated. He did not have mechanisms in his legs or in his fingers or anything that he should be able to do that. So there's clearly some supernatural thing going on here. And then you know the dog is holding him and he's like saying stuff like you shouldn't have come here. Eventually our storyteller gets out of his grasp and him and his friends just Hightail it out of there. That's the basic gist of the story. Uh, like I said, kind of simple and to the point, but uh, good stuff. I love it. Now, the author did do a sequel. I believe it's just called Return the Fun Land. Uh, I'll just do a quick overview of that. Uh, I did not like this one as much. I kind of thought it was sort of like an unnecessary sequel. 
Basically the gist is, uh, the guy from the first story has now been institutionalized after the events of uh, being harassed by an animatronic dog. And his younger brother is now old enough, he wants to check out Funland. He wants to figure out what made his brother go so cuckoo. So uh, he's, he's bringing some friends and he's going to do the whole thing. It's basically the same story, there's not a lot added on. It's like, they go, they see the abandoned ruins of the park, they find the dog, the dog scares the crap out of them, and then they get out of there. I think there was an attempt to kind of expand the lore, but I think it just kind of ruins a bit of the mystery that the, the first one had. Not a huge fan of the second one, it just felt kind of unnecessary. Not, it's not bad, it's just not particularly great. So with that, I figured the, uh, the appeal and excitement of the Funland Creepypasta saga pretty much over. But then while I was doing research for this video, <laughs> I came across something that kind of blew my mind just a little bit. Apparently, Funland is a real place. I thought this was just something completely fabricated for the story. Um, I thought maybe it was an attempt to kind of be like a Five Nights at Freddy's knockoff even. No, this is a real place. It was a real amusement park. It did shut down and they did have a creepy dog animatronic that was uh, in the outhouse. There's not a lot of documentation of this place. I could hardly find anything. Uh, hopefully more comes up. I would love to see what this animatronic looked like when it was still in action but I did find footage of it sort of in ruins, uh, which is still neat, that's still something. It's just funny in the day and age of the internet where you can find pretty much documentation of anything and everything, old home videos and this and that, you, just, you can find documentation of old places pretty well. And for there to be something that's just so under-documented, it kind of makes it a perfect candidate for a creepypasta because it adds to that mystery. But with that said, uh, I will now show you a picture of the, the actual dog prop. It's a little uncanny valley. It actually kind of creeps me out. It doesn't look exactly like how it's described in the story. It's a little different, but I think the author had to kind of like fill in some blanks because he was probably going off of memory. And then he kind of had to think if it's been decaying for years, what might it look like now? Because what this, this footage, what the actual dog looks like, it's, I think this came out after the creepypasta story. It's kind of interesting how that all works. If you are interested in seeing more footage of the real fun land, uh, the video I found was from Mr. Fable's Exploration on YouTube. Uh, he did a few videos at Funland. You want to watch the second one he did uh, because that's the one where he actually finds the footage of the dog. So while the creepypasta was pretty good, this adds an extra layer that makes it creepier for some reason. I don't know. Let's get into the rating now. Uh, I gave the gore a 0 out of 10 because I don't think there was any bloodshed at all. So, 0 out of 10 on that. Creeps, I give it 8 out of 10. It didn't really creep me out, but I think it did a good job at trying to be creepy. But there's also the real fun land footage that may have helped influence the creepiness a bit. Thrills, I get a 5 out of 10. I didn't really feel like I was on the edge of my seat or anything. Monster, I'm giving a 10 out of 10 because spooky animatronic things are always awesome. And overall, I'm going to do an 8 out of 10. Uh, it didn't have me shivering in my boots, but it was a pretty entertaining horror story. Uh, great job! Darren Silvers. Yeah. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Horror Furs. Uh, I plan to do another toy review uh, for next week, so look forward to that, I guess. Okay, bye.